Hey friends, you know that monitoring your cloud services is vital, but it can be complex. Azure offers so many options to help you, but how do you know which ones to use for your scenario? Azure Barry is back to tell me what to choose today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hansman and it's Azure Friday. We're here with Azure Barry. How are you, sir? I am very good. Thank you. Um, you have you? done. You have done great. You've done a great job uh, on online, on your blog, on videos over the years, telling people about all the different things that Azure has available, but being very prescriptive. This is what's great about you, and why I like your content is you're very prescriptive about. If you have these problems, you kind of build a flowchart of sorts, and you explain this is the Azure feature or the Azure service that is available, and monitoring is a big, complicated issue right now, and you're going to help me. Uh, demystify a lot of those things today. Absolutely. All right. So there's there's Azure monitoring. There's different ways to log. There's application insights. How many different things are going on? How many different ways are there to look at an application? Who there's uh, I don't know like uh, <laughs> seven different services, probably a bit more, but there's definitely seven that I'm going to uh, go through mm. to uh, that you can use to monitor your application and also your subscription and multiple applications. So an overview of all your applications. But these services exist for different reasons. It's not that there's duplication. It's that there's specific use cases and reasons to use these different things, and we just need to understand what our business need is and then map it to the correct service, right? Absolutely, yeah. Different, the services have different uh, requirements for, or, or when you have different requirements for uh, for your app, you use different services. Some services are meant for just monitoring one app. Some services are meant for monitoring security, for instance. Very cool. All right, let's do it. So in Azure, you have uh, multiple options for monitoring your applications. Now, one of those is Application Insights. And Application Insights is actually a feature of Azure Monitor, which we'll see in a bit. And you use Azure Application Insights to monitor a single application, and that's then a web application, or it can also be a desktop application. And then next you have Visual Studio App Center. That's also meant for monitoring a single application, and you'd use this to monitor, well, you guess it, a, a mobile application. And then you also have Azure Network Watcher. And you use this well to kind of watch your network, so to troubleshoot network issues, to find the next hop, uh, troubleshoot IP addresses, troubleshoot VM access issues, things like that. And then there's Azure Monitor, which I just talked about. And Azure Monitor has as a feature application insights, but also other monitoring um, tools. And Azure Monitor is really meant as an overall monitoring system. So you use that to monitor multiple applications, or for instance, all your applications within a subscription or within a resource group. And then next is also the security center, which is kind of a monitoring service. I think it definitely is because it monitors actively all of your services. And then it tells you which services are less secure than other services. And then it also suggests things that you can do to improve the security of those services. And then uh, an extension of that basically is Azure Advisor that also includes those recommendations of Security Center, but Azure Advisor monitors all of your services as well and comes up with other recommendations, not only security, but also for performance, uh, availability, and for costs. And then the final service for monitoring your applications in Azure is Azure Sentinel. Azure Sentinel is a security-based service. It kind of also does what Security Center does, but it can go a lot further, and we'll see what that actually is in a bit. So how would you go about choosing between these services? Well, what I do is I first ask the question, well, what is the scope that I need to monitor? As in, is that a single application, or is that more? Is that maybe all of my subscription, or let's say my resource group? And then after I determine that, I can take a look at the functionality that I actually need for monitoring my application, because that can be different. For instance, I could uh, need a security system. So you would look at the security center, for instance, or uh, I might need to uh, monitor usage and you would look at a different service there. So let's take a look at what is the scope that I need to uh, monitor. These services, Application Insights and App Center, Visual Studio App Center, you'd use to monitor application level. So a single application, you'd monitor with these services. And if you need more, so you need to monitor your subscription or resource group or another pairing of services, 
then you would use Azure Monitor, Network Watcher, Security Center, Advisor, and also Azure Sentinel, because it's also an overarching service that monitor, can monitor your whole subscription there. Now, let's take a look at some of the functionality and we'll dive into some of these services here. So here is Azure Application Insights, which is now actually a feature of Azure Monitor. What would you use this for? Well, you use this to monitor web and also desktop applications in its detail, in very much details. And I'll show you in a bit what that actually looks like in the Azure portal. So you can monitor and alert also on many things like availability. So you can have this thing, monitor the availability of let's say an Azure App Service web app, and then send you an alert when the availability goes down, which is very useful. Or performance, also failures, usage as in how many people visit my application where are the, those people from and even what type of operating system do they use when they do that you can also set up uh, pings and multi-step web tests where you say well i want my website to be tested from let's say five geographical locations and uh, i want to test the home page and the about page and after that i want to go to uh, the episode page for instance and then uh, you can then alert me when that goes wrong or even when that goes right and as your Azure Application Insights, as it is a feature of Azure Monitor, it sends all of its data to a log analytics workspace, which is a bucket that collects data that Azure Monitor uses. And we'll see that in, the, in one of the next slides as well, what that looks like. You can also continuously export the data of Azure Application Insights uh, into, let's say, a blob storage, for instance, that you can use later to analyze. Uh, it's in JSON format. And this thing also comes with an application map, which is one of my favorite features of Azure Application Insights. And I'll show you that why that is actually one of my favorites. So this here is Azure Application Insights in the Azure portal. This is monitoring one of my websites and it can do lots of things like you see availability and failures. Let's just look at the failures because things don't always go so well. Now it's all right here in the last 24 hours, most of my failures here are attacks that I get where other uh, bots or something, they are pinging me and they're looking for um, URLs that don't exist. But let's see what happens when I increase the range and look at more failures. See, I have a lot more failures here, like a file not found exception. And from here, I can actually drill down in that, into that exception and I can see it like this, which is very cool because now I can actually see the whole stack trace of the exception, which can help me to debug it and to actually find what's happening in my application so that I can fix it and then don't have that anymore, which is very cool. And then my favorite feature, like I said, is the application map. So this is a website that I have that also connects to a database and also to an API, like you see here. And you can see those connections right here and you can see how many calls happened within a certain uh, time frame. in this case, that's last hour. But also when things go wrong, you can see that here, and when things go right, you can see that here as well, including the performance between all of those components, like this, which is very cool. So that is Application Insights. Now let's go back and zoom in to another service, which is Azure Monitor. Now Azure Monitor <coughs> collects data from all of your Azure services. Now in Azure, there are lots of things that generate data and log files and metrics. So Azure resources like uh, the services that run your application and your databases, applications themselves, like the .NET application, for instance, that you run that also has uh, internal logs and things like that. There are virtual machine agents that you can install that can uh, derive data from that virtual machine and send that also somewhere. And there's also data from data collector APIs. Now, all of this data, goes into a logs, log analytics workspace, which what I said was a bucket that basically just collects data. And in Azure Monitor, you use this in Azure Monitor logs, which is uh, what this data store is called in Azure Monitor. And the other data store for Azure Monitor is called Azure Monitor Metrics. And this thing collects metrics, time series based metrics. So things like uh, memory usage, CPU usage, where Azure Monitor logs stores logs like web server logs, for instance. And then within Azure Monitor, you can uh, analyze both of these data sources. So with the log analytics feature of Azure Monitor, you actually uh, can diagnose 
uh, the data in Azure Monitor logs. And you could use then the custom query language to do that. And with the Metrics Explorer feature in Azure Monitor, you would go through all of the metrics or the time series data like CPU usage and memory usage, things like that within the Azure Monitor Metrics data store. And with these functionalities, you can get lots of insights and you can create dashboards and reports within Azure Monitor, works book, workbooks, which are reports, insights, which are intelligent things that bubble up, which Azure Monitor says, hey, I found something that might be interesting to you. And you can also alert on those things, as in when something goes wrong, when you have failures, let's say, then Azure Monitor can let you know that that's actually happening. So again, let's see that in action so that you have a little bit of context what that looks like. This here is Azure Monitor within the Azure portal, and it is then connected to an Azure Log Analytics workspace, and it also has uh, a metrics store that's all automatically uh, done for you there. Now, this is connected to all sorts of applications and also to application insights here, and it can tell me lots of stuff. Like for instance, when I click here on storage accounts, it uh, can tell me some insights about my storage accounts. For instance, here are some of my storage accounts, and it tells me the transaction timeline, how many transactions happened for these storage accounts, what the latency was, and if and how many errors there were, for instance. And additionally, I can also um, hook up more data sources to flow data into the log analytics workspace that an Azure Monitor can use. I can do that from here. There's lots of uh, services that I have within my subscription, and I can simply create diagnostic settings to then start funneling all that data to the log analytics workspace and or to the metric store so that uh, Azure Monitor can then use that and query that data, which is very cool. Now, so that's the functionality of Application Insights and also Azure Monitor. And then before we go and compare all the services, I also want to talk about Azure Security Center versus Azure Sentinel, because that might be confusing. They're both security monitoring services. Now, which one does what? If you look at the security lifecycle within a company, you have these steps within the process. You have collect and prevent, which are the steps that you use to uh, get an inventory of all the services and resources that you use to run your application and store your data and get a handle on how secure these are and try to make them more secure. And then there's detection of incidents where you try to detect what is happening. If, if there is a breach, for instance, or you have a vulnerability, you try to detect these things and also actively hunt for incidents. And then once you have an incident, when you, when you found an incident, then you can uh, investigate them and analyze them to see what where they came from and uh, how severe they are. And finally, then you respond to the incident by fixing the vulnerability, for instance, maybe cleaning some things up, maybe emailing users, you name it. Lots of things that you might do with the security incident, and you can also automate that stuff. Now, if you look at Azure Security Center, where does that fit within this process? That fits right in here. That does most of the collection and preventing, and also a little bit of the detection. But it's very good at collecting and preventing so it will create an inventory of all of your services and it will then tell you actionable recommendations of what you can actually do to make them more secure, which is very cool. And then Azure Sentinel also does that, but it focuses more on the overall picture. So it's also very good at detecting incidents and then investigating them and then responding to them. It can also prevent, so uh, provide you with recommendations but it's not its uh, forte, so it's not as good at that as Security Center is. So I would say use Security Center for collection and preventing, and then Azure Sentinel for everything else, basically. Now, again, let's take a small look at uh, what that then looks like. Here in the Azure portal, we see the Azure Advisor service. Now, everybody has access to Azure Advisor. It's a free thing that you can use. If you have not seen this yet, please click on it because it will tell you uh, lots of recommendations for free about your Azure subscriptions that you can follow. Now, if you take a look here, I can have recommendations for cost, reliability, operational excellence, performance, and also for security, which if you look at it, it's not going very well for my subscription. So if I click on this, these are also the security recommendations that Azure Security Center would show me. And 
these are uh, recommendations that I can very easily then implement to improve the security of my services. So this thing, for instance, has a quick fix, which means that I can basically just say, I want to implement this for all of these services and remediate that, and then that would work, which is very cool. So we've now seen functionality of Application Insights, Azure Monitor, and also what kind of the difference is between Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel. Now let's lay all of these services against each other and see how they stack up. So we have App Insights, Visual Studio, App Center, Network Watcher, Azure Monitor, Security Center, Azure Advisor, and Azure Sentinel. Now, if you want to monitor a web or a desktop application, so a single application, then you would use Application Insights. And if you want to monitor a mobile application, then you would use Azure uh, Visual Studio App Center. If you want to investigate and respond to security issues, then you would use Azure Sentinel, because that's specialized in that area. And if you want to inspect network traffic to diagnose problems, then you would use Azure Network Watcher. And next, if you want to get an overview of all of your monitoring data, like we just saw in the Azure portal, you would use Azure Monitor, which can then use the custom query language and also create reports and uh, workbooks to alert you on all that's going on within your subscription, really. And if you want to monitor and prevent security issues, then you would use Security Center because that's what that thing is good at. And then finally, if you want to get an overview of actionable recommendations, then you would use Azure Advisor. So this is kind of a guide that hopefully helps you to pick the right service to monitor your application within Azure. This is such a clean way. I really admire the way that you, you express this uh, because I find myself asking the same kind of questions and sometimes I will use the wrong one because I'm familiar with it. I'll think that App Insights solves all my problems. Or I'll go to Azure yeah. Monitor, which is great, and it gives you an overview of all the monitoring data, but it's just so overwhelming. It doesn't give me uh, the, the the insight that I want. It just gives me you know, an infinitely uh, queryable log. So I appreciate you breaking it down so cleanly. Yeah, I definitely hope it helps. So it's good to know that all of these things have a specific functionality that they are meant for, and uh, you know they have a bit of overlap. But still, once you know which one is uh, meant for which task, then you can cleanly make a choice for which one to use when. Fantastic. So I'm learning all about options for monitoring in Azure. You can check out Azure Berry online on its blog and on Twitter, and as well as as many courses on Pluralsight. Ah, uh, thanks so much. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.